Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Our House 21 and now it's time for a quick tip. So this quick tip might not be all that quick, but I'll try to make it as quick as quickly possible. Anyway, so if you've been following the social media feeds, you've been seeing that I've been knee deep in battery work lately. So I, for my 100 mile an hour fleet, like to use, well actually just all my speed run cars in general, I like to use Castle six and a half millimeter connectors. Uh, and that's just because I have actually desoldered a Dean's connector uh, during a run on, uh, on my Slash Dizzy. And that's just not the way you want to end your day. So one of the cool things about these Castle connectors is the fact that you know, even though they are just a six and a half millimeter bullet, and there's lots of bullet based connectors out there, you know, there's just regular old bullets, but there's also like things like this is an XT90, you know, which is what can't, what comes from the factory from these Turning G graphene. And these are nice high current connectors too. But the thing I like about the Castle connectors is the fact that it's a really big bullet connector, and they're actually rated for continuous loads up to about 200 amps. You know which is more than enough to get most of us down the road so but from talking to some of my collaborators and such people tend to have problems getting these guys together so you know as you guys know there's two types there's a male and a female so the um so for the battery side these are the female connectors so it, the process for these actually isn't as bad as i, I think that the male connectors are actually a little bit worse so I'll probably do another, uh, a sh uh, well, I'll tack on a little end on this one just to kind of show the process for that one. But for females, for doing the batteries, it's not that bad. So first thing you have to do is need to make sure that you put the battery leads on like this right here before you try to solder. Because I actually have inadvertently put this on or forgot to put it on and solder and have to desolder everything. And actually, right before this, I actually put one on upside down. I don't know how the heck I did that, but put on upside down, soldered everything up, looked at it, and just said, you know, duh. So get everything together, get everything secure. So after you do that, the next step along the way is I like to have a little piece of scrap wood that I work with. And you take these bullet sides, so just right here. You can do it just sitting on its own. I have my little helping hands here that I like to do just to kind of help hold things in place. But you get this guy secure, and that was not secure. Let's try that again. You get this guy nice and secure, point it in the right direction, and then you use a soldering iron. For the, my large scale big battery connectors, I started using this monstrosity. This is a 180 watt soldering gun from Harbor Freight. But you can do like, anything that like a 60 plus watt glass soldering iron will work really well for this thing. This is overkill, but it was on sale for like 20 or 30 bucks. So overkill was cheap. All right, so you get it right here. You get your soldering iron into the hole like so, and then you get it nice and hot. And this is not something I can demonstrate one handed, but once it's hot enough, then you can get your solder. And I just use some standard Radio Shack solder here. You know, if you really want to, you can go to some more heavy duty industrial strength stuff, but this stuff works just fine. But anyway, you get your solder nice and hot. You get it into the hole here and you just melt a little puddle of solder inside of it. And while it's still hot, you then take your battery leads, which you've taken about an eighth of an inch of insulation. So really just a cup of, you only need like two or three millimeters, not that much. You know, and um, I like to tin the wires before I do this. And for th those who don't know, tinning the wire is taking and applying solder to it before you actually uh, solder the connection. So basically you heat up the wire, you apply some solder to it, you let the solder flow into the threads of the wire. So that way you know that you have a good, uh, a good solder connection. So with your tin wires being exposed, you dip them into the pool of molten solder that's inside of this connection. And for the male connectors, that works pretty much the same way, the male side of the bullets. And hold it in there, let it cool, and then you have a very, very firm, very, very strong, very, very secure connection that's gonna give you virtually no resistance through the connection. So for the male side, you know, 
I have my little, um, I've got my little board here with a hole drilled in it. So if you just imagine this is a male card connector, I set this guy in here. And the male side uh, castle connectors has a little bullet cup on the back like this. So you just uh, do the same process. You heat it up and you apply your solder in and you uh, drop it down into the molten solder and uh, let it cool for a few seconds and you have a nice firm electrical connection. Now the next part of the process is actually securing or driving the connectors in. And this is where it gets a little bit tougher because um, basically you've got to push the little bullets, these guys right here, into the holes. And they there's a bit, you have to drive them in quite a bit. Like if you see right here, you know, you, you have to drive it a few millimeters down in order to get a, a nice connection. So that can actually be a little difficult. So the method I usually use is to take something, you can use a bolt. For me, I have the shaft of a four and one or five and one screwdriver. And I drop this guy in here like that. Now, of course, you'll have the actual wires sticking out the back when you're doing this. But if you stick it onto like the board, get it so that you have a little bit of connection. And it's gonna take a little bit of finagling to do that. So you get this secure and then you just whack your, the shaft or whatever tool you're using to drive the connector home into the pole and that's pretty much it and you just repeat the process now things to keep in mind when you're working on these guys you want to protect yourself because these are live batteries you know you've got a lot of charge in these things and lipos can give hundreds of amps you know in an, in an instant and that is more than enough to do some damage, cause a fire, or even electrocute you. I mean, these things aren't anything to really be trifled with. So when you're not working on the lead, tape them up. And another little method that I discovered is like, it's easy to just work on one in the side, get it like this, solder it in, drive it home. So it, this one connector is safe while the other connector is nice and taped up. Alternatively, a method you could use is just to build one side at a time. So that way, like you see here, I've now got this connector in, and if I just go ahead and seat this down properly, the right way this time, then I can um, go ahead and work on the other side and not have to worry about accidental shorting. So that's probably a better method to do it. So again, lay this guy down, like this right here, get your nice firm connection, pound this guy in, and then you're free to work on the other side and not have to worry about shorting as much. See, got the other lead taped up, everything's safe. You know, you want to minimize your risk. That's a simple thing to do. And if you follow that process, you should be all right. So, you know, it's it doesn't really take that long to do this. So, but just take your time with it. The first few times you do it, you're going to make some mistakes. Or you might, you know, it might be a little tough. The nice thing about it is that it's really hard to truly screw one of these things up. As long as you have a good solid connection, you have it, uh, these pushed right down into the into the connector, like uh, well seated. You're good to go. You're really golden. All right. I hope this was useful to you guys. And less than ten minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. So remember to like, comment, subscribe, and. Remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, do it all over again. I hope you guys found this useful and beneficial because you gotta, you gotta take good care of your batteries because if you don't, then you're gonna cause some problems. And you, the last thing that you want is to cause a fire and burn up your vehicle because you made a silly mistake on soldering. So, and, oh, and I just kind of point out here, like I was saying with the, uh, you know, with you just need to take a little bit of insulation off because you know this way one of the nice things about these connectors is you don't need the heat shrink so everything's nice and secure and it's a, it's a really nice semi foolproof -full connection and because it's polarized you can't plug it up backwards so they're a little more expensive than some of the other connectors um, and quite honestly you know a lot of the other ones have very similar features and they will work for you very well I just like the castle ones just you know, just because. All right, but our house only one signing out. Peace.